Mutual Broadcasting System presents The Mysterious Traveler, written, produced, and directed by Robert A. Arthur and David Coven, and starring two of radio's foremost personalities, Ralph Bell and Chuck Webster, in Key Witness. This is The Mysterious Traveler inviting you to join me on another journey into the realm of the strange and the terrifying. I hope you will enjoy the trip. It will thrill you a little and chill you a little. So settle back, get a good grip on your nerves, and be comfortable, if you can, as we watch an underworld syndicate and the government go in desperate search for the same man. It's the story I call Key Witness. The scene, the penthouse office of Mike Bruno, the nationally known and feared crime syndicate boss. Bruno... A tall, ruggedly built man in his 40s paces back and forth as his head accountant, Oliver Smith, turns the pages of a ledger, reading the figures before him. Income from Waterfront Enterprises, period ending July 31st, $42,765.50. Income from Wire Services, period ending July 31st, $71,000. $942.20. $942.20. From Nightclub Enterprises, the same period, $56,713.42. Income... Okay, okay. That's the income on the books of the government. Now, what are the real figures? You got them in your head? Of course, Mr. Bruno. Income from Waterfront Enterprises, $103,652.28. From wire services, $156,421.10. Nightclub Enterprises, uh, $211,410.28. Liquor distributorships was um, $87,642.15. Racetrack interests, uh, $48,675.34. Ah. All right, you got the total? Yes, sir. Uh, $518,731.15. <laughs> I sure got ahead of you, Oliver. You and that photographic memory of yours. It's a lucky day when we got together. Be five years tomorrow, sir. Five years tomorrow, huh? And in all that time, you've never forgotten a fact or a figure. Yes, sir, Oliver. The sea men can search high and low. They'll never catch me with a set of books showing the real take. Because it's all in your head. Uh, Oliver? Yes, sir. (laughs) Yeah, come in. Ah, hello, Frank. Come on in, come on. Uh, Boss, uh, I got to talk to you uh, alone. Uh, Oh, yeah, all right. Uh, Oliver, I'll uh, call you when I need you. Yes, sir. I'll uh, be in my office. <laughs> you look worried. What's the matter? Let's have it. I just got word from the big boy. Treasury men are going after you. Is it winter dressing, or uh, do they really mean it? They really mean it. But with all the headlines and the papers, they have to make a clean up. And you're it. Hmm. Can't the big boy stop? No, no, no. This is too big even for him. <laughs> and uh, he says you're on your own. That's nice. Where's it coming? The team men will be here tomorrow morning uh, to seize your books. Don't waste any time, do they? Tomorrow morning, huh? Bruno. What are the chances of the book standing up under a real investigation? Eh, maybe yes, maybe no. The books don't satisfy them. 
They start questioning Oliver. Yeah, 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 yeah. Well, what are you going to do? I got to think. I got to think. Wanted to see me, Mr. Bruno? Uh, yes, Oliver. Have a seat. Uh, yes, sir. Now, look, I've just gotten word that the tea men are going to look at our books. What? Tomorrow morning, they're coming to get them. But, but you've always assured me they, they'd never look at our books. Things have changed. You read the papers. They're looking for a fall guy. Me. The boss has a way figured out to beat the rap. The books will stand up. Until they start asking you questions, Oliver. Yes, I, I know. Now, you're the one man who's got all the answers. And the answers are all in your head. Without you, the team men wouldn't have a case against the boss. That's right. All right, Frank, open that suitcase for Oliver. Okay. Why, all that money? A half million dollars. And it'll all be yours if you do exactly as I say. Mine? Yes. I want you to write a letter saying that as treasurer of the corporations, you embezzle large amounts of dough. What? That's I... right. You to assume all responsibility for the books. But, but they, they'd send me to prison? No, 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 no. You're taking it on the land. There are a couple of countries in the world where you can't be extradited for embezzlement. Denmark's one of them. Denmark? Yeah, that's uh, what my attorneys tell me. That passport you used last year is still good, Oliver. There's a plane leaving at midnight for Europe. You just have time to write that letter, letter and, and pack. But, Mr. Bruno... Yeah, yeah. If I do as you ask, I'll be an admitted criminal, forced to live abroad the rest of my life. With a half million bucks? Oh, what's the bad about that? And, Oliver, you're uh, forgetting one thing. You fill out the corporation tax returns for me. You go to prison with me. Play it smart, Oliver. Half million bucks and a life of ease in Denmark. You have much choice. No, I... I, I don't, do I? Very well, Mr. Bruno. I'll, I'll do as you say. Now, nah, you're showing good sense. Okay, Oliver, write that letter assuming all responsibility for the dough I've held out in the government. And when you're finished, I'll send one of the boys along with you to help you fight. Yes, Mr. Bruno. If you'll excuse me. Sure, sure. Which of the boys do you want to take them to the uh, <clears throat> airport? None of them. I'm not taking any chances on a slip-up. You and me will be taking Oliver to the airport. Mr. Bruno. Yeah? Haven't you taken the wrong road? This isn't the way to the airport. Relax, Oliver. We got plenty of time to make the airport. Sure, you plan to leave for another hour. But... But we're going in the opposite direction of the airport. Why, at this rate... All we... right, shut up. That half a million dollars. Denmark, you, you never meant it, did you? You catch on fast. Now that you have that letter I wrote you, you're going to kill me. No one lives forever. Easy does it, Oliver. Where are you taking me? We stop at the top of the hill, boss. Right. Mr. Bruno, you can't kill me. Not after five years of loyal service, haven't I always done everything you asked without question? Take care of him, Frank. No, don't do that. He'll be out for at least ten minutes. That'll give us more than enough time. Yeah. Which about the other car? A clump of trees up ahead out of sight. Good. Yeah, it's lucky traffic's light on this road. That's why I picked it. Okay. Let's finish the job. Put him behind the wheel. Uh, Got him. Easy. There we are. All right, I'll release the brake. Start pushing. I'll steer it. Just a few more feet to the edge. You say it. 
200 feet to the bottom? Yeah. Nothing but rock down there. Okay, she's starting to roll. There she goes. <laughs> Hear that? Yeah. But uh, we're going down to the wreck to make sure. I'm not taking any chances. Come on. Look at that car, completely wrecked. We didn't have to bother coming down here. Maybe not. Is he still behind the wheel? I can't tell you. Wait till... No, he isn't behind the wheel. He's not in back either. Well, let's look around. He was probably thrown clear of the car. I don't see him. He's got to be around. Hey, what's that you're picking up? His wallet. Some keys. His wallet? That wreck didn't finish him off. He must have gotten away. A 200-foot drop. He couldn't have. No, where is he? I tell you, he came out of it alive. He's on the loose. Well, he couldn't have gotten far. Come on, let's look for him. In the dark. We never find him. Let's get back up the road. Next tavern's half a mile down the road. I've got to get to a pond. I've read him. Give me Waverly 6678. That's right. Who oh, no, uh, What are you doing? You're going to round up some of the boys? Yeah, that's right. I know, Mac. The boss. Yeah. Now listen closely. I don't want any slip ups. I'm a next tavern on Highway 37A. Yeah. I round up half a dozen of the boys in a hurry. Send a couple of them to Meadville and Lewistown, both on 37A. That's right. Have a couple of more boys drive along 37A between Meadville and Lewistown. Yeah. I had to pick up Oliver Smith. You heard it right the first time. There'll be a ten grand reward to the guys who find him. Yeah. I get the boys on it, but fast. We gotta get him, Frank. If he ever gets to the police. Oh, the odds are all in our favor. Probably pretty badly hurt wandering around in a daze. Why, for all we know, he might have crawled a few hundred yards and died in the underbrush. Yeah, well, that's what I'm hoping. Oliver hasn't any money or moxie. Come on now, don't worry, boss. He isn't gonna get to the cops. Yeah, sure. Come on, let's get back to my office. What time do you got, Frank? The time? Uh, a few minutes after nine. They've had since midnight to find him. Nine hours. Not a trace of him. Hey... Maybe they found him. Hello? Yeah, Mac? No sign of him, huh? Give me that phone. Mac? How many boys you got out now? Twelve. You can't even find one broken down accountant? Have you searched for the woods? The underbrush? Well, all right, do it again. Tell the boys the ward has been up to 25 grand. Yeah, that's right. Twenty-five grand. Oh, will you relax, boss? Will you just just take it easy? Take it easy. Take it easy. You know what it means if all of us spills the fence? Yeah. Oh, say. Have him come in. It's George Tonelli of the Treasury Department. How are you, Mr. Tonelli? Come on in. Oh, thank you, Bruno. Uh, this is my associate, Frank Stevens. Hello. Uh, how do you do? Bruno, I have an order here empowering me to seize the books of all your corporations. What for? <laughs> I pay all my taxes. <laughs> the Treasury Department just wants to double check. Make sure. Well, that's the way you want it. Okay, you can have the books. I got nothing to hide. Good, uh... Where's your head accountant, Oliver Smith? Oh, uh, he's out of town for a few days, Mr. Tonelli. Personal business of some sort. He uh, should be back by Friday. Oh, I want to talk to him. 
After we've gone over the books. Oh, yes, I understand. Mm -hmm. Miss Daniels, will you see to it that Mr. Tonelli's given all the uh, books of our various corporations? That's right. All right, Mr. Tonelli. They'll be given to you on your way out. Oh, thanks, Bruno. Oh, uh, by the way, I heard a police flash over my radio while I was driving here. Seems a car registered in your name was found wrecked off Highway 37A. One of my cars? Yes. Didn't you know about it? No. <laughs> well, that run, I got six cars. One of my employees must have taken it without my permission. Or it may have been stolen. Was uh, anyone uh, found in the... Well, I'm sure we haven't met before. No, but I recognize you from your picture. Sit down. Thank you. Yes, sir, like I always say, there are more cops like you we have nothing to worry about. I've been following your career for years. How did you like the crane case? I don't think I remember that one. Oh, you must. Their plant was held up back in 1946. As I recall, the bandits got away with $90,000. That was a lot of money in those days. It still is. At any rate, a Freddie King was apprehended. Freddie King, huh? Yes. Uh, would you like to know what happened to him? I can hardly wait. He pleaded guilty and was sentenced from five to ten. Now, he might have done better had he been willing to divulge who his confederates were or the whereabouts of the loot. Well, uh, what did happen to it? Well, that's where you come in. I suspect you wound up with the proceeds of that robbery. Me? You and Ben Benton. Then when Freddy got out, you gave him his share in lead. Lead? Oh, didn't you hear? He's dead. Not good old. Fred. Why, you're all broken up, aren't you? Sure. He was a wonderful boy. Of course, I only know him casually. Well, I bet I'm doing better with you than I did with Benton. He denied even knowing Freddy. Benton said he don't know Freddy? He's a liar. <laughs> but not you. No, you ask. Hello. Uh, boss, this is Frenchy. Yeah, Frenchy, anything new? You still offering 25 G's for Oliver Smith? You find him? What about the 25 G's? You'll get it. Now, uh, do you know where Oliver is? Yeah, I found his hideout. I'm calling from a drugstore in Meadville. Corner of Main and Vine. Corner of Main and Vine. Sit tight, Frenchy. We'll be there in an hour. <laughs> Slow down, boss. There's Frenchie on the corner. Yeah. Yeah, I see him. Get him, Frenchie. Sure, boss. All right, what's the story? Smith is here in town. He's locked up in the town jail. What? Huh? Look. The cops have him? Yes and no. Come on, spill it. The local jail is a dump, four cells. Just on a hunch, I looked in. There's two guys in there. One is a broken down bum. The other, Oliver Smith, looking like a bum himself. And I done some nosing him around. Smith was arrested for vagrancy. Arrested for vagrancy? Under what name? I haven't been able to find out. Don't you get it, Frank? Oliver's in there under a phony name. He's laying low so that neither the feds or we can find him. After he's done 10 or 20 days of vagrancy, he'll try to disappear in that. Yeah, that must be it. They'd give it his right name, there'd be feds all over the place. All right, Frenchy. You say there's just Smith and some uh, old bum in the lockup, eh? That's right, boss. Point the way, Frenchy. We're driving over that jail. That's it over there? That two by four? Yeah, that's it. Where's the sheriff at this time? He lives in that uh, white frame house next to the jail. I saw him go in his house an hour ago. Well, he's he probably through for the day and just the two prisoners there. Yeah. Frank, you got a key that would uh, open those cell doors. 
Oh, sure, sure. <laughs> Those old locks aren't any trouble. Good. Frenchy. Hmm. You got a knife? Yeah. That's good. I want you to take care of Oliver. Right now. <laughs> Look, boss. It's a dangerous setup. What with the sheriff just a few yards away from the jail, and, I, and that bum dares a witness? You can wrap the whole thing up in a minute, Flank. Yo, I can't, Frank, do it. This is more than his line. Because Smith knows Frank. He'd start yelling the moment he saw him. He doesn't know you. Yeah, maybe not, but... If you want that twenty-five grand, you'll do it. In fact, you'll do it because I'm telling you to. Okay. Here's the key, Frenchy. You won't have any trouble with those locks. Just give it to him. Fast and clean. Sheriff's assistant. He told me to bring you over to the house. The sheriff doesn't have an assistant, fella. Shut up, you bum. You say the sheriff? A knife? Yeah, a knife. Please, you. What? A gun? Yeah. Don't let the costume fool you. Treasury Department. Okay, sheriff. A frame, huh? Well, looks like you're right, Mr. Tanelli. So you got your killer, huh? Yes. Throw this guy into our cell, Sheriff, after you've taken that key from him. I'll be right back. Yeah, he's been gone almost five minutes, boss. What could be taking him so long? I don't know. Look, do you think the Sheriff might have picked Frenchy up? Our uh, Frenchy isn't that dumb, but... Should have been back by now. Let's get out of here. I said... What the... Hello, Bruno. Tanelli. Yes, small world. Keep your hands where I can see them. That's better. Both of you. Out of the car. Well, where are you taking us? I want you to meet an old friend. Come on. Right through that door, Bruno. Now, look, Tanelli, I'm no two-bit hoodlum. You can parade around at guns point. I want to call my attorneys. Now, no one's going to deny you your legal rights. Here's the gunman you sent in to kill Oliver Smith. Right, Frenchy? I, I don't know what you're talking about. Smith's an old friend of mine. I just dropped in to see him. Sure. With a six-inch knife. Take a look, Bruno. There's Smith in his cell. See him? Yeah. I see him. And he sees me. <laughs> it's no use trying to throw a scare into him, Bruno. Smith has already made a statement. He's now in protective custody. Mr. Tanelli figured you'd come looking for Smith. Yes, and my hunch was right. Can we use your office, Sheriff? Yeah, sure thing. Yeah, this way. Take a seat, Bruno. You too, Stevens. Close the door, Sheriff. All right. Bruno, I've got your fall guy, Oliver Smith, who's made a complete statement. On that alone, I could send you up for 20 years. Yeah? I got pretty good attorneys. Yes. But not good enough to overcome Smith's testimony. In addition, I could get you on an attempted murder charge. I have a hunch your friend Frenchy will sing. Now, look, I, I want to call my attorney. However, I'm willing to make a deal with you. A deal? Yeah. 
If the government has to go to trial with you, it'll cost a half million dollars to convict you. And a great deal of time. However, if you pleaded guilty, saved the government time and money, I think the court would go easy on you. How easy? Well, you'd have to pay the tax penalties, of course, and do ten years. Seven with good behavior. Uh, I don't know. If you're smart, you'll plead guilty. You know that with Oliver Smith's statement and testimony on the stand, the government couldn't lose. I... I, I, I've got to think it over. There's no time. It's either yes or no. Now, make up your mind. Okay, I'll plead guilty. I know when the odds are against me. Uh, now you're being smart. I'll get one of my men in. You can make a complete statement. <laughs> Bruno, you've read your statement over. Sign here. Now, look, if I sign, you guarantee the limit will be ten years. You have my word. Okay. That does it. Hey, Sheriff, you bring in Oliver Smith. I'll be taking him back to the city with me. Sure, Mr. Smiller. When did you find Smith? The sheriff picked him up at six this morning after the accident. He was wandering along Main Street. Did he tell the sheriff who he was? No. Here's Smith now, Mr. Tanelli. Thank you. As a matter of fact, Bruno, Smith couldn't have told the sheriff who he was, even if he wanted to. What do you mean? When the sheriff picked Smith up and questioned him, Smith couldn't answer. Couldn't answer? That's right. The sheriff called in a doctor. An examination revealed that Smith had amnesia. Amnesia? Uh, he got it from a severe head blow he suffered in the accident. It's a case of complete amnesia. But but if, if he's got amnesia, that, that means he doesn't remember anything of the past. He couldn't have made a statement to you or testified against me. No, he couldn't. And without Smith's testimony... We had no case. That build up you gave me, it was a bluff, a lie. Yes. But justice has been served. And that's the important thing. Isn't it, Bruno? Nothing you do turns out well. How was he to know that Oliver Smith was a victim of amnesia? Uh, some people simply will die easily. Well, poor Mike is now doing ten years at a federal prison. As for Oliver Smith, well, to date he hasn't any part of his memory back, and he never may. Which reminds me of another story. It concerns a young and enterprising undertaker who developed the unique idea of soliciting customers before they were dead. As a matter of fact, he... Oh, you have to get off here. I'm sorry. I'm sure we'll meet again. I take this same train every week at this same time. just heard The Mysterious Traveler. Now you can enjoy other tense and exciting tales of The Mysterious Traveler in the current issue of The Mysterious Traveler magazine now available. In our cast were Ralph Bell, Chuck Webster, Brett Morrison, and Lawson Zerbe, with Maurice Tarpin starred in the title role. Music under the direction of Emerson Buckley, composed by Richard DuPage. The Mysterious Traveler is written, produced, and directed by Robert A. Arthur and David Cogan. Phil Tonkin speaking, this program came to you from New York.
like stories of mystery, of eerie adventure, of things dark and unseen, stay tuned to Mutual every weekday evening and join the I Love a Mystery listeners. You're sure to love I Love a Mystery. This is the Mutual Broadcasting System. <laughs>